This is part of my premium course, so if you like this video, be sure to check out usefullaravelpackages.com. Okay, let's take a look at Tinkerwell. Tinkerwell is PHP Artisan on steroids. It's not free, but well worth the price in my opinion. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of its features. So PHP Artisan Tinker is great, and I'm sure all Laravel developers make use of it at some point. However, it does have some limitations. One, it has no syntax highlighting, so it's hard to write longer pieces of code. And two, you can only execute code one line at a time, which often leads to scrolling up to see previous output. With Tinkerwell, which you can see here, we have this two pane layout where we write code on the left and the output shows on the right. So it's very similar to GraphQL clients if you used those before. So I'm gonna just paste some code in here. So I'm just gonna paste an array of movies, which is an example from the site. And as you can see, the output is here. So let's go ahead and make it a collection. And as you can see, as we type, it updates. And as we add more code, it updates as well. Now, personally, I don't like the auto updating, so I'll turn that off in a second. But let me just chain on some methods here and you see it working. And it's converted to an array. Cool. So there's an option to pretty print. So if you go to actions, prettify PHP or hit command P, it automatically formats it. Uh, if you go into preferences here, we can turn this off, which like I said, I prefer just doing it manually. And the shortcut for that is Command R. And let's go back into preferences here. You see, you can change the theme. There's multiple themes here. You can change the font, the line height, and so on and so forth. So by default, there is a default Laravel app you can tinker around with. And that's what we've been doing here. And if you want, you can even tinker around with controllers and views. So if you go to Tinker HTTP, then we get this new tab here, and you can see a method here that returns a view with some data, and you can see the view here. So if I run this, you can see Welcome to Tinkerwell. As you can see, it is pulling in Tailwind here from a CDN, and it's just outputting it here. So if we wanted to have more data here, say foo bar, we can do that. Don't forget the comma. And let's just add this in here. So this is flex, so I'm gonna have to wrap this in a div. So unfortunately, there's no code editor shortcuts yet. Like for example, there's no Emmet. So we're gonna have to do this manually. So let's just put this here, put a closing div here, and let's just put another div here. Let's indent that. And let's just say div and it's output foo and that should work and let's run that oops let's close the div and let's run that cool so if you want to work within the context of an existing laravel app you can do that as well so let me open up a new tab so you can tinker around with both local projects and projects on a real server so let's just take a look at local project for now so you go to set working directory and then you can pick. So I already have one here for my Laravel e-commerce example. And now we are in the context of that app. So for example, if I just did product all, this should work. Cool. And like I said, you can also SSH into existing servers if you want to tinker around with a real app. So you just go here, I'm not going to do that. So you can even get the underlying query if you're running a query. So for example, this is running a query. If we did view, sorry, action, see queries in selected code, then you see the underlying SQL query here, which is pretty cool. And you can even see the bindings that happen. So let me just put in a slightly more complex example here. And let's run this and let's go ahead and see the underlying query. And there we go. And you can see the bindings here. 
So there's even plugins for your favorite code editor. Right now there's ones for VS Code and PHP Storm. And I believe Sublime is coming really soon. So you can tinker around directly within your code editor. So I have it installed in VS Code. Just search for Tinkerwell in extensions. As you can see, I have it installed already. And I have my project open here. So let's go ahead and tinker around. So you can do this anywhere. So I have just a new file here and I set the language to PHP. And then you can just go ahead and select what you want to run. Or in this case, you can just run it because it's its own file. So if you just right click and open or run with Tinkerwell, it'll open the integrated terminal and you can see the output here. So if I wanted to tack something on here, change it to an array, we can do that. And you can also do the command palette and run with Tinkerwell. There we go. And like I said, you can run this anywhere in your code. Just make sure to select it. So for example, if I were in some sort of route closure, we can do that as well. Let me just make a closure here. And let's just copy this and run this as well. And let's select it and run with Tinkerwell. Cool. So yeah, wherever you are, you can run this. For example, if I was in my controller and if I were in this function, again, you can just select it and run it. And there we go. Cool. So I'll probably be making heavy use of this since I'm already in my editor and I don't have to switch to another app. Okay, now let's take a look at a practical example, which I actually just used. So for my upcoming course on useful Laravel packages, which is almost done, I have all the videos already in Vimeo, which I'm using for video hosting. And I wanted to get the overall duration of all the videos I have. So we can make use of the Vimeo API and pull that data. And then we can use some collection methods to sum it up. So let's go ahead and do that now. So another feature that I forgot to mention, which we'll use here is you can install any composer package into the default Laravel app. And we'll do that here since we need an HTTP library to call the Vimeo API. So if you go to action, install composer package, I'm going to use ZTTP, which is a wrapper around Guzzle and allows you to make HTTP requests. And as you can see here, I already have it installed. And now we can just use it directly. So I'm going to do use ZTTP slash ZTTP. And let's go ahead and make a response. And let's just start with something basic here. So let's make a get request to the endpoint, which is HTTPS api.vimeo.com slash me slash videos. Okay. And let's do response json so this is not going to work because i didn't pass in my token but let's see if we get a response and we do it says no user credentials were provided so let's go ahead and provide that so to do that in zttp we just have to add a header using the with headers method and then we can pass in an array let's do it like that and that's pass in the authorization token authorization and let's pass in our bear token and you get this from the Vimeo API I'm just going to paste it in and I'm going to delete this later on so I'm not going to bother blurring it out okay and this should work if I did this correctly so let's go ahead and run this And there we go. We get a response with all the videos in Vimeo. So by default, it paginates it and only has 25 results per page. So what we can do here is add a query, st query string and change the per page. We can also use an array here, but I'll just put it in the, the URL and say 100 because I have, I think I have right there, it says 99 videos, so 100 will do. But the API is pretty slow, so I'm going to change it to 10 for now. And then we'll change it to 100 once we have our code working. So I just ran it again and it's much faster. So the data we're interested in is not this stuff, but this stuff. This is an array of arrays. 
of all our videos. So let's just grab that. So I'm going to say data. Okay, let's run that. Cool. And let's make this a collection so we can use the collection methods. And all I'm going to use is the sum method. And all I want to do is sum up the duration here for each of the videos. That's all we have to do. And this will give us the sum of all our videos, but that's in seconds. So let's see what we get. So that's in seconds. Again, this is just for 10 videos, but let's go ahead and divide this by 3,600 to get hours, which is what I want. There we go. So those, the first 10 videos are one hour long. So let's go ahead and get everything. This might take a second. And there we go. All the videos are 18.66 hours long. And we got this information by using Tinkerwell. Pretty cool. So be sure to take a look at the suggestions page where there are a bunch of suggestions from the users. Actually just put a few suggestions in here. So yeah, be sure to check out Tinkerwell if you want an even better Tinker experience.